Hello, beautiful souls. I hope you're doing well. Today, we have an interesting topic in our, our creative intuitive transmission that has to do with a topic that's not always easy to address, which has to do with our own shadows and our own darker sides. Um, the title of uh, the, today's transmission, Shadow Work, Harmonizing All Parts of Us, really is an invitation here to uh, look at the different elements of our lives, uh, either in past lives, in present lives, ego, mind, soul, all parts of us, and try to harmonize them with everything that they are. And it's very easy to devilize or to uh, have certain aspects of us that we don't want, that we don't like, that we put judgment on and that we don't want in our lives. And it's easy to try to avoid that. And the only thing we do when we avoid that is that we put all of this under the carpet and unconsciously is kind of biting us in the rear end <laughs> uh, because we don't want to address it sometimes. So I think it's an important message to address today because uh, I have noticed lately that um, in my environment and the people I you know exchange with that I, and I find this very, very encouraging. There is more and more people who are really doing that inner journey of healing, transmuting the traumas. Uh, and all of this is part of what we would call the shadow work, having to face not only with difficult and challenging events of our present life or previous lives and traumas. But also, inevitably, when you do this inner work and, um, you know, transmutational work, you're inevitably uh, end up facing the darker parts of your being as well. Uh, and that's not just your mind and your ego that we tend to devilize, and they have their purpose, you know, just in balance. Um, it's not just that. It is, there is certain elements in our pr present life and in past life that are troubling and unpleasant to, to deal with, to have to look at either ways in which we have not perhaps been acting in the most positive way or loving way or where we have withhold love, withheld love, where uh, perhaps in present life or previous lives, we have acted in a very violent or regressive or uh, destructive way, you know? So that's part of the experience on Terra. And perhaps not just on Terra as well. I mean, it's a whole universal experience. If we start with the idea that source in itself um, is trying to experience itself through uh, physicality, through us, then it's normal that we have to experience, you know, all the different elements of what being incarnated and going through different states, emotions, facet facets of our soul is all about. So um, I remember when um, Alex Collier and Elen Elena Denan, both of them, when they speak about, you know, from their contacts, uh, what their, you know, often high vibration contacts say is that there's kind of two ways to look at our reality. Uh, we can either look at it like first level, which is our experience on Terra, where we're facing very challenging energies, uh, you know, the whole reptilian thing and the greys and, you know, all the, and, you know, uh, very regressive humans as well, deep state, and, you know, all the regressive elements. And devilize them and and just say, you know, uh, this is bad and, you know, th this is not what we want and I'm not part of this. I'm just like a rainbow of, of, of love and light and I'm just this really good person. And, you know, we, we, we kind of dichotomize. We create this thing where there's like good and bad and, you know, and unfortunately, the universe and source is not that simple. Uh, source is actually generous in her experience where she she gives us the opportunity to experience all sides. And there are lives in which we're going to come here and we are going to be a deep state, you know, <laughs> mofo. <laughs> or we're going to be um, living in a reptilian, you know, 
manipulative, narcissistic kind of approach, or we are going to integrate into a an, a, a very regressive hive mind, like for example, um, the grays and things like that. Why is that? You know, because we need to experience all sides of it. You know, we do need to experience all sides of it because, again, what comes out of the 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 information that is being offered by you know, um, upstairs high vibration beings is that um, a source, uh, a little bit like a dynamo, needs for the, the the essence of life, what we call the frill, the the energy of is is the basic energy. This is created by the interaction of, if you want, of of dark and and light between regressive and positive because it creates a constant fight a constant um challenge for the light and each of them uh this this if you want their um their interaction creates a dynamo creates um the opportunity for us to discover who we are in these challenges and also to create life because when there's no challenge when there's no war when there is no life becomes just dead you know you always need to be challenged and so life is more complex than just devilizing one side and you know putting one side on a pedestal and it's really about balance and you know um certain councils uh, upstairs councils or, or federations and they focus on the balance between both elements they don't want to devilize or necessarily eradicate uh, regressive beings but instead they give these beings the opportunity to say do you want to experience something more positive and if they don't want to and if their action is disbalancing this play of, of power between light and dark if you want then there is a moment when they're going to be dealt with but never eradicated the whole point is to always try to keep that balance between that uh, positive and regressive elements. And we have all of this within us as well. Um, and when we start doing this journey of going within and encountering uh, our darker elements and more regressive elements within ourselves, uh, it's, 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 not com it's not comfortable. And it's something that we have to do to deal with not only about our attitudes in this life or things we might have done, but previous lives as well. You know, if you're doing that journey of remembering who you really are, you're going to discover that you're, you're not, you, you have not just been love and light and rainbows and, and, and unicorns. You've also been other things, you know, and I always like to um, give an example of my own experience in order to illustrate what I'm sharing and include myself in the in the discussion in the conversation here. I have mentioned in the previous video some time ago that I, as I was remembering my previous lives, I've uh, I had to face the fact that I had a life as a female secretary in the Nazi uh, in in high level uh, Nazi. Um, party or whatever, you know, um, institution or, or organization, which was, you know, which was bad enough. <laughs> but if that wasn't bad enough, um, actually, I had a colleague or a, a male uh, officer of Nazi officer who was uh, really playing mind games with me. And I don't know if there was physical abuse there. I, I don't remember that particular aspect, but he was very, very oppressive and very being very um, psychologically manipulating. And I actually remember um, one day uh, slitting, slitting <laughs> his throat with a knife in uh, not in a bunker, but some, some sort of under, um, under on the under the earth parking or something you know talk about talk about love and light and talk about you know rainbows and 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 unicorns i mean i consider myself generally a high vibration and in general you know i try to keep that high vibration but that's part of my history and at the same time i was this you know horrible nazi person um i well you know i say this in quotes I also uh, have remembrance of, of previous lives where I, actually I was 
hiding in pantries and wardrobes because I was being chased by a sort of totalitarian state. It was maybe I was even uh, a Jewish person trying to hide from from uh, from Nazis. So you know, since we are multidimensional beings and everything happens simultaneously in our lives, that's possible. Maybe it was from another war or horrible kind of you know challenging event. But the point is, what I'm trying to say with this is that we we've been like the Cartman triangle, you know, which is being like the the victim, the aggressor, and the savior. We've all experienced this, and uh, it's important to remember that it is part of the richness, the treasure, to be able to experience everything in order to be able to live a complete experience and when you bring back that to source as a beautiful soul then you've been everything and you've experienced all part of source and that's absolutely essential but it's very challenging and unpleasant uh to realize these things but i thought it was important to well not just i i mean the melon collective which i'm part of because we it's something that was inspired to me this morning because you know i'll give you a very funny example last night i was playing with my art material and i had a little accident with um some black ink you see this i don't know if you see my fingers but my fingers are really stained with black ink <laughs> you know everything always happens for a reason and here i was thinking oh my god tomorrow i'm doing my cit and i'm gonna have like these really disgusting you know dirty fingers people are gonna think like i'm dirty i don't wash myself or whatever and it was stupid you know it was just the ego being stupid and this morning i was watching that stain and i was like okay it's still here you know what am i doing gonna do with that and i was doing my, med my meditation i asked mela as always you know on monday mornings i ask okay do you have a message you'd like me to um to, tr to transmit and it was this whole notion of accepting all parts of herself and the shadow work and and i thought oh how interesting that there is this this black ink, you know, stain on my fingers that doesn't want to go away. I mean, I tried to, you know, with every possible way to make it go away. It's going to go away with time. But and I was like, why are you desperately trying to get that off of you? Like, what what's the shame there? Like, you know, why not accept it and say, OK, this is this is part of who I am today. Like I have this stain on my finger. And, you know, obviously this is just a this is just a metaphor because um we come with stains we came we come with experiences that have been regressive and hard we have killed people in wars and crimes we have but we have also saved and helped and loved but we've we're, we're all of this it's really important that we don't devilize too much um you know the darker things and that Please, you know, don't mistake me here. I'm not saying that we should like like the deep state and the reptilians and the greys. Absolutely not. This is not what I'm saying. What I'm trying to say is that having these regressive beings in our Terran experience was an opportunity for us to discover our light, you know? So the point is not to devilize them, but instead to focus on the fact that this experience has given us the opportunity to grow and discover the beauty of who we are as well. And maybe it was a sacrifice for them to come here and play that horrible role. I don't know. You know, I'm not presently, I'm not living that, but it's most possible. So maybe in a previous life, we've played the role of the mofos and we've helped some societies or some individuals to wake up to, to their own light. And now it's perhaps our turn. And we're also, even if we consider ourselves more of the light, that doesn't mean that we don't have within ourselves all these elements that sometimes challenge us. You know, we, we can be judging, we can be aggressive, we can hurt others, we can withheld, withhold love. So we're not pure, you know, it's, it's not black and white. It's not that simple. That's a little bit too easy to go into this. So my point is that why not try to focus on our light and discover who we are while integrating this part of shadow that we have within us that's part of our past experiences present experiences where we haven't been at our best 
And they serve as a reminder of what we don't want anymore. And that in itself is a very precious experience. So this is kind of the essence of uh, what Mela uh, wished to um, exemplify today through this example of the stain here. But also we're going to have a look at the different pieces of music and artwork, which kind of um, reinforce that, that kind of um, inspiring message, which I think is really, really crucial right now for when we think that there's more and more people going the journey within to, to discover who they are, uh, more and more people are going to experience the very unpleasant um, discovery that they're not just love and light. And there's also parts of themselves, which they'll find challenging. And hopefully this message will guide and accompany us in, in this acceptance of all the parts of us. So first of all, the first piece of music, which I find really funny, well, it's not funny, but it's interesting. The first piece of music that was inspired to me today is called Mephisto, <laughs> funny, by the group That Can Dance. I've talked about That Can Dance many times, so I'm not going to go back there again. A group that really integrates music from um, world music, but also music from different uh, periods of history. So this piece, Mephisto, uh, obviously the title is very... Um, not really nice because Mephisto was a kind of a demon in the German folklore uh, in the, the legend of Faust. And uh, so not a very pleasant figure, but, you know, a dark one, which is part of the, the dance between dark and, and light. And uh, but what's interesting about this piece, it's that it's a musical piece. It's very short and it's uh, medieval in style. And it's very personally, I find it. I find it's a beautiful piece of music. Like it's very short and sweet, but it has this um, lovely medieval elements to it. Um, but then you have that title and, you know, what it refers to, which is not, mm, you know. So again, the contrast there between the title, uh, you know, but the music itself is is quite lovely. So, you know, meaning that perhaps we should take what's, positive out of things and not necessarily devilize the the darker things but just take the opportunity from um the light that emerges the beauty that emerges sometimes and and focus on that second piece of music is uh called harmony in balance <laughs> again kind of funny uh by nawang kechog uh, Nawang Kichov, I uh, also presented in previous CITs. Uh, he's he was a, a Buddhist a Tibetan Buddhist monk, uh, and he is a musician, a, 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 a flout, uh, flutist, uh, beautiful flute music, harmony in balance. And what's interesting about this piece is that it's it's like there's two flutes uh, in the piece of music that's very harmonious and beautiful, but the two the two flutes are calling each other and responding to each other and sort of a dialogue. So I thought that was kind of interesting because not only it's it's about the harmony and balance of uh, the, those two those two flutes, but on the second level, it could also refer to this notion of balancing the darker and lighter elements within ourselves and within the universe that we, we don't have to focus just on one or the other or devil is wine and, 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 and just... Uh, worship the other, but just try to find the balance between both elements within ourselves, because that's the only way we're going to live in a balanced way. And so I thought that was kind of interesting. Then we have our kind of funny, lovely <laughs> um, background here. So what does it represent? We have this kind of iguana slash, I don't know, like could it be some sort of... Um, Oh, dragon, reptile type of thing. Interesting. So obviously there's two ways of seeing this. You can see this as just as a, a beautiful reptile animal. I mean, not, you know, not all reptiles are bad, as we know, even upstairs, you know, reptiles, races, they're not all bad. Uh, there is some, the Draco reptilians, which are very regressive, but there's also beautiful reptilian species out there. So again, trying to find balance and not devilize anything, but, you know, just remember that there's a diversity and there's also a diversity within us. So what do we have here? We have this reptile, which doesn't seem aggressive. He's there. He's, he's big. He's a bit frightening by his size, but he's kind of curious about what this little girl has to offer him. She's offering him something to eat or whatever. And so she's not afraid 
of the reptile. She's not afraid of, in quotes, in the second level, that perhaps potentially darker aspects that could, I mean, that that animal could just open its mouth and eat her, right? I mean, but she's in trust and she's, she's, it's not being like blindly in trust, like, oh, everybody's loving and love and no, no. She probably knows, you know, that there's a risk there and she's being careful. She's being um, discerning, but she still offers a part of her metaphorically uh, the opportunity to exist and to by nourishing it. So uh, again, I think it's a beautiful um, opportunity to reflect on the fact that we do have elements in us that are perhaps um, darker or potentially darker, but they're also the opportunity for us to grow, to face our fears, to become stronger, to recognize who we are, to discover our inner light and discover our darkness as well. And there's nothing wrong per se with it because source, if source has created darker and lighter energies, you know, they, they, there's no judgment there. It's just, it's just the way things are in order for helping each other evolve, you know? So, and after that, we have this uh, collage we have created, which is entitled Kiri Mael, Kiri Mael, which is spelled here. And our collage, uh, Kiri Mael, here is interesting because what we have is a dark black background. Uh, which again could allude to um, the darker aspects or the darker elements uh, of our psyche or our previous lives or within ourselves or in the universe, uh, but which is a again, as always, mitigated by the uh, golden little dots there, or we don't know if, really if it's stars or flowers, but that are, that are really present and really come to to play this dance between dark and light and, and uh, offer contrast to the darkness and, and mutually the, the reversed as well. So that's really uh, something that's present there. And in the end, it's a very beautiful paper, like even if it's black and, you know, in terms of like, if we associate it with dark air energies, this is a beautiful paper where, where the gold is just, because there is this blackness behind the gold comes out even better or is even more beautified. So again, this play of dark and light. In the center, we have this large circle, which is very golden and source-like in, in, in energy. And it's, you know, beautiful white birds in flight and, and trees and flowers, which connects us to our Terran reality. So the the way in which the gold, which to me represents source energy, can be grounded in our Terran energy. And it's something that we can integrate in our bodies. But uh, within this large, uh, you know, circle of gold and source energy, there is those challenging, you know, black background with golden waves that's inside of it. So that's integrating it. Um and this obviously represents the challenges. The, the, the waves represent the challenges of the, perhaps the regressive energies or darkness, but which are integrated within the large circle of light of source. And even within that dark circle, there is a smaller gold and black circle that always harmonizes both energies. So there is, it's a little bit like a wink to the yin and yang sign, but you know, visually presented differently where, you know, light is in dark, dark is in light and everything. They need each other. It's a dance. It's a dance. They need each other in order to, um, to make us grow and to evolve as soul. Because until we reach 13th density and we, we merge it with source, our whole purpose is to experience all parts of ourself, discover who we are and evolve as souls. And we do that through that dance of darkness and light, which challenges us. Then we have those circle up and down, which with red, which for me represent the connection to the heart. So the lower one could represent the connection to the real physical heart, but also the upper one to the more the spiritual heart, if you want, meaning that you keep that balance between the darkness and the light by being connected to your discernment, 
to your uh, not withholding love, so being in your heart and being able to not devilize anything, but just be discerning and choose to focus where you want to focus your energy on. And then we have those two branches, which in this case uh, are placed in a way that creates a little bit of a dynamo, like a little bit of energy, like if they were turning. And that's interesting because uh, those two branches, if you want, they could obviously, for me, they, as always, they represent source because they're golden and they have the motif of the flower of life. And this, I find that this, this, those branching placed, those branches placed in that um, particular position represents for me this dynamo or, the, or this dance of the universe where darkness and light keep dancing with each other and where balances or homeostasis is always trying to find itself, you know, try to find a balance between the darker elements and the lighter elements. And it's, it's just, you know, it's just a continuous dance and it's very difficult to remain um, in balance in this because sometimes we're filled with fear or we don't want that and we want to put it aside and it's useful. It plays its role, but we need to integrate it within our lives and so not to reject anything. So this is the message that was offered today by the Mela Collective, but also through the music and the background and the individual aspect. Uh, I know these days are challenging for many people because, like I said, people are a little bit less focused on, you know, super soldiers and med beds. I'm seeing more and more... What, there's nothing wrong with that. It's perfect. It has its place. But what I'm saying is that people are really starting to focus on the essential right now, which is actually what will change our world. Literally, our 5D reality will happen only if each of us, one by one, we do that inner journey of transmutation because we can't reach five density when we're still devilizing parts of us and that we're still you know, judging others and not doing that inner journey of healing and transmutation of our traumas. So I see more and more people doing that. So I just want to say that for me, it's very encouraging and very positive to see that more and more people, and sometimes you know, I see that they're, they're challenged, they're challenged, like I've been challenged the last couple of months with my breakdown, but it really brings them as well, this, 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 this treasure of discovering who they are with, with their light and shadows. And they're integrating this shadow work. And so it's taking away a lot of the this ease the judgments, uh, the ego, and a lot of things are disintegrating. More regressive things are kind of disintegrating, which I think is really, really positive. So uh, it's very encouraging for the future of our Terra, I think. Anyway, that's how I see it. So um, Kiri Mael, as always, is available as an original collage as well as a, a digital file if on my website abigailrichard.com and this is will this will be it for today i wish you a lovely day and a rich inner journey into yourself and please don't be don't be judging and don't reject the darker elements of you that you might discover in this journey just integrate them that doesn't mean you have to succumb to them and then just you know submit to them you can just watch them as the observer Look at them and say, oh, okay, I'm that too. You know, if I'm judging someone, usually it's because there's something in them that's part of me that I'm not accepting. So, you know, let's think about that sometimes because I personally, sometimes when something annoys me in someone or in a situation, usually it's because there's an unresolved thing within me uh, about that. So always an opportunity to grow. <laughs> All right, dear beautiful Celeste, I wish you a lovely day. Take immense care of yourself. Bye.
All my gratitude for helping this channel bring high vibrations and high frequencies to more people.